Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Great to have you here with me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. We're going to watch severe weather along the Gulf Coast, some snow showers, lake enhanced snowfalls here in the Northeast. And watch as we go in time here. We're going to be watching a potential system in the Gulf of Mexico that looks very ominous by late week here. Could this actually be some sort of subtropical entity as we go out in time here? We may be looking at the potential here for an early start to some sort of tropical weather season here. And as it makes a beeline for Florida and the Bahamas, could it head up the East Coast and cause all sorts of problems here as this high pressure and pressure gradient causes all sorts of coastal flooding and beach erosion along with heavy rain? And if that weren't enough, this system across the Northern Plains, this could be our next major blizzard here across parts of Southern Canada, the Rockies, and eventually the upper Midwest. Let's get into it. Now, here we go. Looking at the European model, that severe weather exits across the parts of the Gulf Coast and off the U.S. East Coast. Snow showers kicking in across the Northeast for you Monday into Tuesday. Now, watch as we go out in time. Yeah, those snow showers continue in upstate New York, Northeast Ohio, Northwest Pennsylvania throughout the week we get little bursts of snow now the thing we have to worry most about is what's going to happen with our next energy here so we start to see look what's happening here we start to see this energy forming here as this comes off the texas coast this is uh, march 22nd uh, right around 2 a.m so this is getting towards friday look what starts to happen with this system it's looking very subtropical in nature a big burst of energy here across the eastern Gulf heading towards Florida and eventually the Bahamas come later Friday into next Saturday and forming off the southeast coast and continuing northward as this system brings copious amounts of moisture along with this pressure gradient. There's that high pressure to the northeast. These isobars becoming very tight and close together. Let me just zoom out here. There's our next system across the plains. This is going to be quite a massive blizzard. Uh, by winter storm standards here. And as we can see, as we go towards the 25th into eventually the 26th, we start to have a break off of two low pressure systems here. One just southwest of Bermuda here, and then one up here in the mid-Atlantic. And look at these isobars. You also have another high up here in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And that pressure gradient is going to keep those east southeasterly winds plowing into the mid-Atlantic and New England coast. This could be tremendously devastating here if this verifies. So this is something we're going to have to keep a very close eye on, becoming increasingly concerned about this. Now let's turn our attention to the plains here. Let's just back this up. You can see the pieces of energy coming from the west coast, and that is going to continue to plow into the Rocky Mountains. That initiates our low pressure system just east of denver this is the time of year that you do get these blizzards especially across southern canada the northern plain states and watch what happens here as we go through the 24th there it is the 24th across south dakota it is the area just to the north here that we're going to see that massively blizzard-like conditions here across the upper midwest and that's just going to continue to pinwheel towards the northeast and then kind of retrograde and then eventually head into western Ontario, pulling massively warm air up across the east. And then on the northwest side, you're going to continue with those blizzard like conditions. All right. So let's take a look. We have severe weather exiting across parts of the southeast and those snow showers continuing with this inverted trough. Here's that trough up here in the Canadian Maritimes. I do have my Canadian winter storm outlook later in this video. So watch ahead for that. And look at this. Here is that snowfall. You know, these streamers spreading off Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Lake Superior, just continuing on this northwest flow. And we're going to continue to watch as we head into Monday, particularly Monday night into Tuesday. This is where we're going to start to see, you know, more from Cleveland on northeastward to Erie and Buffalo, Syracuse, Tug Hill Plateau, a couple inches with locally higher amounts, particularly inland in those snowbell areas. As we continue towards the 20th, we start to see a burst of heavier snow here with another low pressure system moving across southern Ontario and Quebec. That's just going to continue as this low pressure continues to wind out towards the 21st. You can see there is some inverted troughs hanging back here that's helping to enhance these lake effect snow streamers. So that will be a fading memory by the 22nd here. So that leads me to our next couple storms here. This one in particular, 
We have two pieces of energy. This one on the 21st provides some beneficial rainfall to Texas and Oklahoma. There's snow breaking out across parts of the Minneapolis and Milwaukee areas, spreading eastward towards Chicago and eventually Detroit. Now, look what's happening here. We have a low pressure system initiating across the Gulf of Mexico. This is where we could see that potential for low pressure going maybe subtropical on us it's going to spread what i think is going to be a severe weather outbreak towards florida as we head there it is on the 22nd at 2 a.m so we're heading towards friday morning there it is 5 a.m just west of tampa this could be looking like a very serious situation here. A squall line forming on the east side of this a low pressure system. This is by 8 a.m. across Florida. And look at this. This is going to be racing to the east. So there it is by 11 a.m. just west of Miami, just east of Cape Coral. And look at this towards the Bahamas. So this system becomes very large very quickly and then moves off towards the northeast. We get towards Saturday morning, the 23rd at 2 a.m. You can see what's happening. We got interior snows up here in the northeast, wet snow, maybe more elevation dependent. But there it is, low pressure moving up along the U.S. East Coast. And I'll show you momentarily on the European model, this could be quite a devastating area of low pressure, especially with the pressure gradient. You have this high pressure to the northeast, and you get these isobars closer together. You'll have a massively southeast flow that'll push water and wind into the coastline. And there it is moving up into the Canadian Maritimes. And there's our potential blizzard coming across the plains, which could spread some serious snowfall totals and blizzard-like conditions as we head towards the 25th from the Dakotas, the Eastern Rockies. You can see, let's just back that up. All that energy moving across the 23rd, the 24th, and into the 25th, and then eventually into Eastern Canada come the 26th. And don't forget, before we continue, if you like the video, smash that like button, question or comment to keep our weather community active. And if you haven't joined my weather community, consider hitting that subscribe button, bell notification button, so you're alerted with all my future weather updates. And if you want to share the video with all your friends and family, it really does help to get the weather word out. And if you want to send me a super thanks, there is a button down below along with a coffee link if you want to buy me a coffee in the description. Let's continue. So as we move through the rest of the evening hours, taking a look at your HRRR future radar here, you're going to see the storminess is going to be right here in the Florida panhandle heading eastward here towards Jacksonville towards 10 p.m. That is looking like a good bet. And you see all these thunderstorms here across the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to be moving off the coast. And look at that as we head towards tomorrow, central and south Florida are going to be under the gun for strong to potentially severe thunderstorms and then moving off the outer banks of north carolina by 2 a.m on tuesday morning so let's head up to the lake effect so looking at sunday evening here across the northeast you can see these lake effect streamers really start to get going northeast ohio into western new york it's not though until here's 7 a.m on monday you can start to see the trajectory becoming a little bit northwesterly here and that's when we're going to start to see the explosion of lake effect and lake enhanced snow here on the backside of this low pressure trough so essentially it really does start to get cranking monday evening and monday night here that's when a lot of you will see these bands orient here cleveland buffalo erie uh, Syracuse area, Tug Hill area. And then as we head towards, say, 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning, you can see where a bulk of the snowfall will be lying, uh, Cleveland up to Erie. So maybe a couple inches potentially out of this. So if we take a look at our liquid precipitation totals for this week, you can see the Gulf Coast is the big winner. Uh, second place goes to the Eastern Great Lakes and parts of Northeast and Southeast Canada, Four Corners region as well. But you can see, yeah, as we head out in time, you can see what's going on off the Gulf Coast and Southeast Coast here as we head towards, say, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. This is with that area of low pressure that we're going to watch to see if it takes on any subtropical characteristics because if it does, it may affect parts of the East Coast as well. Snowfall accumulations here. We're looking at that lake effect snow, downwind Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, particularly later Monday into Tuesday. It's going to start, you know, a little bit more on Monday, but Tuesday particularly, we could see up to three to six inches widespread locally, higher amounts to a foot. Also in the Adirondacks, the White and Green Mountains there, and also into Southeast Canada, we're going to continue to watch that cold air pour across the Great Lakes. And look at this out here. 
This is next week and into early the following week. We could see a massive blizzard on the order of maybe two to as much as four feet here across the northern plains and Rocky Mountains. So if we take a look at the GFS model, it's pretty much agreeing in the short term here with the European model. You can see as we head throughout the week, those snow belt areas uh, from Cleveland on northeastward here, we should see anywhere from widespread two to four inches with locally higher amounts of six to 12 inches in those persistent snow bands. Also, the Adirondacks, White and Green Mountains. And look at here in the plains. There's that expanse as we get into next weekend. Look at that massive blizzard there across the northern plains going up into parts of eastern Ontario and Quebec. Yeah, this is some really good news here, especially into Canada, getting the snowpack up. And if you want to see on the GFS here, our total liquid equivalent, it's, yeah, along the Gulf Coast, that's where you're going to see the two to three inches. Um, the drought conditions there in Texas, at least in the short term, we won't see much additional until we get towards the end of the week. You get about anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch, locally higher to an inch. We definitely need the rain, though, in Texas and Oklahoma. I'll be spreading some more rain back to the east here as we head through the rest of the month here. And you can see a big surge of moisture. There's our low pressure in the eastern Gulf as we head through the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. GFS really showing high liquid equivalent amounts, you know, closer to the two and a half upwards of six inches. All right, so northeast snowfall here. This is what we're looking at. You know, most of this falling later Monday into Tuesday into early Wednesday as well. You can see the snow belt areas. This model doesn't have Cleveland barely in anything, but I still think you'll see a couple inches at least one to two, maybe upwards of three to four. But here it is, Erie, Buffalo, especially south and east of Erie and Buffalo. That's where you'll see the four to eight inch snowfall totals. Also the Tug Hill in New York State. Watch the Syracuse area, Adirondacks, White, Green Mountains here as well. And as we continue through the rest of the week, next weekend, we could see additional snowfall on top of this in the same exact areas. So the, the, uh, the Great Lakes here are open for business essentially for snowfall. And let's take a look at the European model here. There it is later, particularly Monday night into Tuesday, showing more snow there for Cleveland, Erie, Buffalo, a couple inches at least. Look at this. The snow belt areas, though, further east inland. Yeah, you'll get upwards of, say, three to five, upwards of six to ten, maybe 12 plus here in the Tug Hill of upstate New York. And let's take a look at our mesoscale model here. This will give us a good idea of what's likely to happen as we head through this will take us through about tuesday morning here so there it is cleveland erie buffalo a generalized say two and a half three three and a half inches of snow and then just inland you know especially south of erie east of erie and buffalo that's where you'll see three to six maybe closer to four to eight some areas locally higher 10 inches and there's the tug hill into the adirondacks as well more lake enhancement. You can see the orientation here exactly northwest to southeast. We'll have to see if we get a Georgian Bay connection here as well. So for our upper air pattern here, using our CFS medium range climate model, you can see this new week. We are looking at so much storminess here. This, this is looking more indicative of mid winter rather than late winter but there it is you can start to see our system that may go subtropical on us here in the southeast it's definitely cut off in nature so there it is kind of pinwheeling out towards parts of you know the eastern bahamas there's that ridge building across the northeast so whatever happens with this you could be looking at a massive pressure gradient here now look what's come barreling down the pike here this doesn't look very good either with this massive energy so let's just get this going here. You can see that rides up to the northeast there. That's with our next system towards the 29th. And then look at that. We see a massive fast moving pattern. And look at towards uh, April 4th here. More troughiness here across the east. And we start to see more of these storm systems coming out of the eastern gulf here. This is towards April 8th and 9th. Look at this. This is crazy. So we start to see some massive Greenland blocking. Yeah, now that it's not winter. And you start to see what we could be looking at in East Coast storm pattern. So for you snow lovers, that this is very frustrating to you. Because look at by mid-April, we start to see a massive trough here in the eastern part of the United States. And this would have been, for you snow people, nice to see come the, the middle part of winter. Look at this. 
very, very, very stormy. So for our Canadian winter storm outlook, let's take a look at Canada here. Yeah, as we head through Sunday into Monday, we have an area of low pressure across Ontario and Quebec. It's going to be continuing to spread snow showers here across much of southeast Canada. Most of the rest of the Canada is drying out with high pressure really building in here. So if we take a look, we're going to continue in time here throughout the week. You can see that low pressure pulling up towards the Canadian Maritimes, pushing most of the moisture to the northeast. We do have a moisture-starved low pressure system across western Ontario here and the next system's waiting off the west coast of Canada here. So let's take a look. The biggest activity is actually going to be across eastern Canada this week. You can see a low pressure system. There it is producing snow showers across southern Ontario and parts of Quebec. A weak system out west here producing snow in the mountains, rain in the valleys, but it's not going to amount to too much. So as we continue to go in time, this low pressure gets a little bit energized here across southeastern Canada, especially New Brunswick come the 20th here. We could see a burst of some heavier snow, maybe upwards of, say, 15 centimeters in some areas. So looking pretty interesting here across the area. One thing I want to note, this is probably going to get going as a blizzard here come mid to late week, especially towards next weekend. Watch how this blossoms. So we have two areas that we're going to continue to watch here. So... Look at this. We have an area of snowfall here across Ontario, especially northeastern Ontario and western Quebec. You see this overrunning precipitation down here in the States. Now watch this area fill in in southwestern Canada, British, southern British Columbia, these areas. Yeah, you're going to start to see this, you know, fill in. Um, this run of the model is showing most of the heaviest snow across parts of the Midwest in the United States, but I would not be surprised if this extends here into southwestern Canada as well. Blizzard conditions here, high pressure building in to much of eastern Canada by the 24th. Look at this low bombing up in the Canadian Maritimes. So oh, this is kind of crazy. That's going to produce tremendous amounts of wind here in eastern Quebec, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Newfoundland area. And then look at this. This is towards the 26th. There there is that low that formed that blizzard there in the parts of southwestern Canada in the Midwest. Look what's happening to it here come the 26th into the 27th. We're seeing this low bomb over eastern Ontario and western Quebec. Heavy snow and wind is likely potential for 15 to 25 centimeters of snow is high. And look at this. We start to get to push warm air here into Newfoundland with this low ju tracking just to the west here into eastern uh, Quebec at this point and look at this so the next system we have a few systems around the edges here in Canada while high pressure is building right in the central part of Canada and there we go towards the 28th into the 29th southern Ontario and Quebec could we actually see some snowflakes here in Toronto Ottawa and Montreal it's quite possible don't count on it definitely at this point because we've had bad luck this winter it seems with snowfall in these areas but look at that yeah, it seems like the warm air eventually winning out there. Another system here towards the 30th across northern and northeastern Ontario. And there, look at that. We're pushing rainfall all the way up to the southern part of Hudson Bay here towards the 31st. So we start to get a warming trend here across eastern Canada. So if we take a look at our Canadian winter storm outlook here, you can see eastern Canada there getting pummeled with snowfall at least through Thursday here. So this week, you know, especially to start off towards the middle of the week, look at where the lion's share of the snow is falling over, say, 15 to 25 centimeters of snowfall here. Uh, parts of New Brunswick, uh, southeastern Quebec, much of Ontario and Quebec for that matter, uh, Newfoundland as well. Here also into southwestern Canada as we have another system, a big blizzard developing. And look at that as we head towards, say, the following week towards, say, the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Look at we're adding massive snowfall totals here in a parts of much of Ontario and Quebec here into northern New Brunswick. And look at that, southeast Canada is going to be the big winner here. We also have a little bit here in the central areas, but look at this. If we take a look at our long-term year through the end of the month, we're looking many areas getting upwards of 25, 35 centimeters of snow, locally higher towards 40 to 50. So it's going to be crazy, crazy good here uh, for snowfall here into Canada. All right, so for the tropics here, we're going to be tracking, you know, some quiet weather as we head this week. Look at that. 
This is what I wanted to show you right around the 21st. Here is the northern Gulf of Mexico. So the models are really picking up on this now. This is a complex of thunderstorms that's going to be heading south into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is where the tropics could get super energized early here. This is starting to look like it's evolving into a situation where we might see a subtropical system. Not definite at this point, but it's something we need to keep a very close eye on. And what happens to it after that? It looks like it heads across the Florida Peninsula. This is 22nd at 2 a.m. Nevertheless, we're going to see an area of very large thunderstorms, higher cloud tops here. So this system's really going to become quite a system as it plows across the Florida Peninsula. Very concerned at this point uh, as, as we get into the Bahamas as well. So we could be looking at tremendous amounts of rain and wind here for the Bahamas. Low pressure, you know, right just east of Jacksonville by this point on the 22nd at 8 p.m. So this thing moving pretty fast. So look how it starts to get cranking here. You see the rest of the Caribbean here. It looks like there's a little bit of maybe a cold front here. So this system is not likely to become fully tropical. Uh, but nevertheless, you can see all this moisture feeding across the Bahamas. Now, the rest of the Caribbean looks pretty nice here. You got some clouds and maybe a few showers here. However, as we continue to go in time, you can see that low pressure continuing to pummel tropical moisture here across the Bahamas and eastern Bahamas by the 24th, finally heading out towards Bermuda. This looks ominously really close to a subtropical system at this point, which this is crazy that we're even talking about this this early in the season. And it kind of just dances around out here for days. And then look at this. You know, while the Caribbean is mostly quiet here again, we see another system developing here potentially across the Northeast Gulf, North Central Gulf towards the 27th into the 28th. Could bring some severe weather across Florida and maybe some tropical downpours. We'll have to watch for the potential. And it looks like just a carbon copy here heading up towards North Carolina again, maybe forming some sort of subtropical or coastal system. We'll have to keep an eye on this. We're in one of those ominous weather patterns here, but I got good news for the rest of you here in the Caribbean. It looks clear as a bell as we approach the end of March. So for our Caribbean liquid equivalent precipitation here, as we go through the next week here, you can see what's going on. It, it looks pretty interesting as far as the Southern Caribbean here, but I want to draw your attention. You know, there's going to be some scattered showers here that aren't going to amount to too much throughout the week, generally less than 10 millimeters here. But look at this low pressure that really gets cranking across the Eastern Gulf. This is that 22nd, 23rd, 24th time frame. Look at this. The Bahamas particular, extremely concerned here. It is going to spill southward here towards Hispaniola to maybe parts of uh, Jamaica and the Cayman Islands here. But look at the central Bahamas here getting on the order of 100 to 200 millimeters. That's on the order of four to eight inches of rain. And as we head east here across the Eastern Caribbean, you can see it's mostly dry this week. It's that low pressure system later in the week into next weekend. We're going to have to watch to see how far south this gets. Even the Turks and the Caicos here getting upwards of 60 to 100 millimeters, solid two and a half to four inches. Puerto Rico, you could see on the order of, say, 35 to 60 millimeters, you know, to get an inch and a half, two inches. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, 
Look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. Temperature-wise here, we're looking cool across the eastern part of the country for Monday. You can see that pool of 30s and even some 40s, but it, you know, it's not too bad. Look at the west, though. It is actually, looks like it's baking 70s all the way up into western Washington. As we head into Tuesday, that changes very little here. You can actually see across the lakes in the northeast. That's where the pivot point of the coldest air will be. But look at this massive heating here in the central states, well into the 70s here into Wednesday. You start to see this baroclinic zone, which is the temperature contrast here. And you know there's going to be some potential for some stronger thunderstorms and heavier, intense, low-pressure systems here. And then as we get into Thursday, look at this. You get this buildup of colder air to the north. Look at this, 30s here across the lakes and the northern upper Midwest here, while 70s and 80s start to blossom here across the south. As we get into Friday, look what starts to happen here. We start to get a bit of a warming trend, even 50s here into parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley. And then look at this for Saturday. Yeah, it's actually not looking too bad across the Ohio Valley into the northeast 40s. The colder air stays bottled up here into Canada and the northern plains. A extended outlook from our hometown viewers. Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Take a look at this Monday through Friday. Snow showers scattered about Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with the lake effect going on. Now, cold air crossing those wa relatively warm lakes. We're going to continue to see those temperatures hover in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Look at that. Thursday, definitely very windy as well. 35 and Friday. Friday scattered snow showers only in the 30s again. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also at Weather Northeastern, also at Hurricane Northeastern, and also at Susquehanna Weather. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern, and you can visit me at MediaMark.com. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out my winter weather outlook for 2023-24. A link in the description down below, as well as my affiliate, Trilogy Maps.